So what I'm going to go on to now is a more complicated case, which has more than two groups. So if I'm doing more than two groups, I can't compare the mean of one group to the mean of another because I've got more than two. So what I do is a process called ANOVA, which stands for Analysis of Variance. So logically, at this point, you should be going, why is it analysis of variance? Because I want to compare means. Now, imagine that I collect some data and everybody comes from the same population. So in total, on average, all of the groups and samples I collect should have about the same mean and the same standard deviation. I'm going to have some differences because of sampling. Now, if I'm mixing together data from two different populations, which have different means, then I'm going to end up with a mean of the combined group, which is going to be in the middle of the means of the separate groups. And I'm going to end up with a variation which makes it wider. Because basically, I'm going to draw a normal distribution, one of those bell-shaped curves. Instead of it being drawn over one distribution, it's drawn over two, which are separated a bit. So it's going to be wider. So what you do for an ANOVA is you pull all the data together, calculate the mean and standard deviation, or the variance, and then do it for each of the separate groups. So if the variance changes a lot between the values you find in the individual groups, and the value that you find in the pooled group when you put it all together, then there's a difference. That's what Levine's test was doing, uh, which is a variant of the F test, and F stands for Fisher. So we're calculating what's called the F test statistic. Now I have a bit of a problem with the F test because the, the F could stand for something else because that's why I think of it. The problem with the F test is that it's the first step of many. And you could quite easily get away without doing it if you just looked at your data. So let's do one. So analyze, compare means. This is an example of what's called one way and over. I'm not going to do two way or we'll stick with one way. That's far enough complications. So I've got one way and over. Why is it in the wrong set? Analyze. Compare means one way and over. I've only got two things. I've got three different groups of height. This is the height data that you typed in in the first practical. And I've got the student heights in centimeters. So the dependent variable is the student height. And the groups, the factor is the group. Now, in this case, it's nice and easy because they're called one, two, and three. In the old days, SPSS would only allow you to call the groups one, two, and three. So if you had it as three named locations or three ethnic groups, you would have to then recode it to a number. Now it will actually allow you to use text names for the grouping variable. So I can, once I've put the outcome variable, which is height and the student group, so I can just go OK and it calculates it. So here's my one way and over. It tells me that this is the amount of variation that's between the groups. This is the amount of variation that's within the groups. Uh, this is the F statistic calculated, and here's the P value. So it's telling me that there's no significant value difference between these three groups in height. That's all great and fantastic. But imagine it had said that there was a significant difference. That's very nice, isn't it? But that's not what I want to know. I want to know what is the specific difference. Is it one's different to two, or two's different to three, or two's different to one and three, or, or what? So the problem with ANOVA is once you've done ANOVA, you need to do something else, which is called post hoc analysis. So here already I found it's not significant. If it was significant, it would make more sense to do the post hoc analysis, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. So when you go to analyze and you go to compare means and you go to one way and over, you have these things here, which are contrast, post hoc options and bootstrap. The only one I want you to ever think about is post hoc. So you click on post hoc and what it will then do 
is the t tests between each of the groups. So in this case, it will do one against two, one against three, and two against three. So it will do three different t tests. Now, because I've done the t test three times, I have to correct for me doing it three times because I'm doing multiple testing. Because the problem is your p-value tells you that you're going to get something wrong one in 20 times. So if I do 20 of these tests, one of them will show me a significant difference even when it's not there. So what I need to do is take into account that I'm repeating the test over and over, and so modify the p-value that I'm looking for. Now, you can do this in your brain by just going, I've got to split the 0 0.05 across however many tests I do. So if I've got it across 10 tests, the 0 0.05 becomes 0 0.005 on each of the tests. So in total, that will correspond to 0 0.05. That is called Bonferroni's correction. So when you click on post hoc analysis in uh, SPSS, it tells you all of these different ways of correcting. So I've just told you how Bonferroni works. There is also SIDAC, Schieffers, and lots of others, depending on equal variance and non-equal variances and whatever else. Usually, regardless of the fact that most cases they're not equal variances, so we should only pick these three, we tend to use Bonferroni, SIDAC, or Schieffers. So I can press continue. And now I can press OK. So instead of having just the ANOVA table, which is what I had before, this thing, I then have another table which shows me all of the comparisons. The only thing you need to look at is the SIG values that go down here to see if any of them are less than 0 0.05. So you can see none of the ones from Shifa are, though, the difference between one and two is 0 0.90, uh, which is the closest it gets to 0 0.05. All the other ones are pretty much the same. For Bonferroni, it's 0.89 between one and two. And for SIDAC, it is 0 0.87 uh, between the groups one and two. So one and two have the biggest differences. All the rest of the differences are pretty pointless. Could I have told that? was going to happen before I actually uh, bothered doing all the hypothesis testing. So if I'd have done a box plot, I'd have put the student groups along the um, y-axis and I'd put their height along, uh, the student groups along the x-axis and their heights along the y-axis and gone OK, I'd have seen that one and three overlap completely, two and three overlap completely. One and two, perhaps they're getting towards a bit of a difference so that they don't overlap. So this is why I don't really like the F-test. Because it doesn't tell you anything other than there's a difference. So if I've got not just three groups, but a thousand groups, and it says, yes, there's a difference in these thousand groups, I've still got a lot of work to do before I can figure out what the actual difference that matters is. So it's a bit of a rubbish technique, but you have to do it. Otherwise, your referees will reject your paper and say you've not done it properly. But to my mind, it's perfectly valid just to do the box plot and say, oh, look, there's likely to be a difference between these ones. Therefore, I will do the t-test between these two groups. So if I did the t-test between group one and two, what happens if I do that? And I'll pop Compare means, independent samples, heights, groups, define groups, group one and group two, continue, press OK. And there is a significant difference both in the one and two sided. If I had chosen just to do that single hypothesis test rather than doing the three of them, So this is the part where you get to see that statistics is a lot about experience and perspective of how you want to do it 
and there's not necessarily an absolutely correct way of doing it that every statistician would do. Different people would do it in different ways. So I've just shown you, if I looked at the box plot, decided only to do the t-test between group one and two, I find a significant difference because I decided to do it that way. So when I write my paper, I can say, there's a significant difference between these two groups, which I thought was going to happen because one of them was five-year-olds and the other was seven-year-olds. If I've got a reason to do that test, if I've got a, re a reason to focus on a specific thing, so long as I do it before I see the data and before I'm not going to get a significant test doing it another way, then I can do my statistics however I want to. But I have to make my decisions before I calculate them. I can't just keep going through and calculating things until I find something significantly different. That's data dredging and is extremely bad practice and what an awful lot of scientists do.